Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyberpunk 2077. Thanks very much for joining me. Last time out, we met up with Meredith Stout, the Militech Corpo who's crapping herself over the fact that the shipment of arms and technology that she was in charge of went missing. And Militech basically put her head on the line for it. Now, we had a little bit of an advantage over her when we met her because we know exactly who took it and exactly where they are, and she didn't. She didn't take too kindly to that, but she put some pressure on us to uh, go ahead and try and make a deal with whoever it is that took the uh, the equipment using one of her cred chips, which just so happened to be completely laced with malware that we definitely removed. So she was probably using us as a pawn to try and screw over who uh, whoever actually took the stuff. And we also, after meeting up with her, found this illegal chop shop. So this, uh, this ripper doc, in inverted commas, was ripping cyberware out of Tiger Claw's gang goons before the gang had a chance to actually bury them. And the gang found out and subsequently arrived and revoked his breathing privileges. Not a smart move. Now, we need to try and work out what we're actually going to do at the moment. But before I get into uh, that little bit of pondering, I said last time that I wanted to take a closer look at the hotkeys that we've got down in the bottom left there, the ones that uh, are next to the heating and grenade slots. So I looked it up and I've got a little bit of an idea of uh, what we can use them for and they're, they're, they're going to come in pretty handy actually. So the two there that are activated with the X button on my controller, they allow me to quickly consume food and drink which give buffs to regen on health and stamina respectively then then next to that we've got what looks like a health kit and i took a look at this thing and it's, it's actually rather nice so that slot is for health boosts and that particular item there uh yeah gives us an increase in maximum health by 20 percent for half an hour not too shabby at all now, the slot next to it is for stamina boost, so I don't have any items for it just yet, but I'd imagine that probably also takes effect for 30 minutes. Next to that, that purple container actually boosts our RAM by two slots, again, for half an hour. Not too shabby at all. And then the last one next to that apparently boosts carrying capacity, probably for half an hour again, but uh, again, we don't have any items for that. I'm sure we'll come across something we can put in that slot before long. Um, let's, let's see about putting something else on the radio. What have we got? What's the dirge? Mm. Night? Oh, there we go. That's a little bit more mellow. We'll take that. Right, uh, let's see. We need to reverse out of here if we can. Uh, no idea what's behind us because I'm blinded by the sunlight. Revert what? <laughs> Sorry! Reversing out onto a main road probably wasn't the best of ideas, but we seem to have gotten away with it. Right, tell you what, we're going to go and we're going to meet up with Jackie at the All Foods Plant. Might as well uh, get things moving along. So this is part two of the two-part plan that Dexter Sean put together for us as part of the setup for actually uh, hitting Compeki Plaza. Now, part one, we've already taken care of. That was meeting up with Evelyn Park. Excuse me. Take the whole road up, why don't you? That was meeting up with Evelyn Parker to get a little bit more information on where exactly the relic is and uh, how to get to it. It's being held at the moment by one Mr. Yorinobu Arasaka, the son and, well, I was about to say son and heir, estranged son of Saburo Arasaka, the uh, the emperor of the Arasaka uh, Corporation. Global empire that it is. Now, they're not on best speaking terms, and Yorinobu has actually stolen this thing from his father's company without his knowledge, and the relic from what we can gather, is this uh, really advanced prototype, which is supposed to uh, essentially kind of guarantee a sort of eternal life. So we're a little bit in the dark as to exactly what that means, but uh, needless to say, the Arasaka Corporation are pretty cagey over the details of this thing. Yorinobu has lifted it from them to pass it on to Netwatch for reasons currently unknown, and... Um, we're setting up to take it off of his hands before he can make the trade. What could possibly go wrong? Right, here we are. Here's Jackie. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 
There you are. Here I am. Now, as I said, Meredith Stout, the Militech Corpo, was quite adamant on uh, on us paying for this thing with her with her credits. Oh yeah, the other uh, hello there. The other element to this is that Dexter Sean has actually already paid for the flathead bot. We need the flathead as well um, for cracking the security of where Yoranobu's staying, but from what I can gather. Um, Dex has already paid for this thing. However, he paid Brick, the leader of the Maelstrong gang, who were holed up in the old All Foods plant here. Problem being, shortly after Dex made the deal with Brick, Brick was thrown from his throne by his right-hand man, Royce, so we've no idea if the deal still stands. Hiya, Porfi. Let me hear what you squared away. Right, Jack. Uh, yeah, have you been here for a while? Been waiting long? The madre always said patience pays off, so... <laughs> um, right, yeah, T-Bug. Is she backing us up? T-Bug show any sign of life? You two talk? She's up to date, fired up to work with Dex. Preparing already. They're familiar, you know? Worked together before Dex took his break. Yeah, I still got questions over that two-year break where Dexter Sean just vanished. And now he suddenly reappeared. Okay, so T-Bug's not helping us on this one. She's preparing for the main hit. Right. Gonna be long. Yeah, we're gonna have to, uh... We're gonna have to go in and speak to the Chrome Heads, aren't we? So, Dex already paid the Maelstromers for the Corpo bot. Thing is, can't be sure the gang goons are still willing to hand it over. He paid up front? Well, whatever. Let's go get this tech. You scheme yet? You got a plan? Huh, so, um... Right, we don't have the option to buy it off them. Of course, we don't actually have 10,000 credits of our own anymore because we paid Victor Vector back, didn't no. we? So, uh, we'll pay again, but with the Militech cred or doubt this will go smoothly. Let's... Hmm, let's keep our options open. Doubt shit can go smoothly. This is Maelstrom. Gang world ain't too complicated. Might's right, the strong survive. Either you fuck others, or you get fucked. So, into the board beast den. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go see these bastards. All right, let's knock on their door. See if they even open up. <laughs> the Borg beasts. He's not wrong. I hate these. Borg fuckers. Just had to be them. Just a gang like any other, right? <laughs> Take the Valentinos. They follow God and the Santa Madre. Honor means something to them. You know what they want, how they get it, and what pisses them the fuck off. With Maelstrom, you just never know. Yep. Yeah. Um, he's not wrong. On, let them know we're here. Maelstrom, out and out psychopaths. Hello, we've got a camera here. Uh, can we control this? Hey, what you waiting for? Ooh, that's rather handy. Whoa. Oh, no way, we can see right inside. Okay. So this is this um All Foods place is a meat packing plant from uh, from what I can gather. Okay, I can't actually see. Hmm. I don't actually see any people. Ring a ding ding chom. Gotta get this done. Okay, okay, I'm going. <sighs> don't know you. <laughs> uh, does it matter? Just open the fucking door. Yeah? You make a fucking appointment? Cause I don't see nothing in my book. Busy schedule, eh? Wanna talk to Royce? Dex sent us. Main room. We've been waiting. Ha, huh, interesting. Ooh, hello. Uh, watch it, Jackie. Cozy place. They could use a few plants, though. <laughs> right, uh, what have we, hello, what have we actually got around here? Right, we'll take a little look because uh, we can't guarantee we're we're actually going to be coming back out the same way. It's a pretty big place from what I can see. What have we got? Buddhism and cyberware, a perspective. 
Okay, so this is uh, an interview with a monk by the looks of it. So, interviewer, for most of us, the precepts of Buddhism seem baffling, to say the least. How would you explain to the average night citizen why bhikkhus such as yourself are uh, against implanting cybernetic technology into their bodies? The monk. It's not that we're against them, per se. Every person has the right to make choices with their bodies so long as those choices don't harm another. Though bhikkhu do abide by stricter rules, such as abstaining from, abstaining from cyberware in order to achieve enlightenment. Then what does your hesitation stem from? How, how does cybernetics affect your pursuit of enlightenment? Well, among other things, it's their vague, fluid status, for lack of a better word. Ask yourself, what is an implant? A part of your body? An impersonal object? Uh, you're asking me? Uh, I suppose I'd say it depends. Precisely. Biku limit their possessions to a robe, umbrella, and a bowl for arms. Everything else is a distraction that hinders his or her release from the world's suffering. Let's say, for example, that a synthetic hand is just that, a hand, a part of your body. But what if it has a watch installed in it? A blade? Right, I think I understand. Where's the, where the line drawn isn't completely clear. Possessions, especially such intimate ones, are distractions that muddy the mind, that pull it further from inner peace. I believe in, uh, the phenomenon of cyberpsychosis is proof enough of this truth. Hmm, interesting. I've, I believe I have seen monks around the place. They usually wear sort of um, brownish garb as they, uh, they walk around and uh, keep themselves pretty much to themselves. Right. Oh, yeah. They look damn well prepared. Uh, well, yeah, you could say that. Security turrets on the door. Presumably this is part of the uh, the Militech bust. Don't think I've ever seen security like this in a gel factory. Yeah, gear from the Jack Convoy. Gotta <laughs> be. Must have been all over it like maggots on dead meat. That's Militech, all right. Psycho boards chromed out with military-grade hardware worth millions. This should be fun. Psychopathic. Um... <laughs> Gangoons with uh, hardware worth millions. Yeah, this could be entertaining. A thousand beats a second. I couldn't believe my eyes. For a moment, I thought Jessica had changed them out for faulty Kuroshis while I was asleep, but no, that wouldn't have been like her. I blinked again. No change. There I saw them, clear as day, the open flaps of Jason's chrome skull. I saw the electronic brain that, up until now, had been hidden by perfect imitation sin skin. The son of Future Tech CEO, the boy of my damned dreams, Jason. He was Android. Shit. I sat there struck with a dumb expression on my face and Jason stared back with one of his own. I couldn't help but wonder now. Were those beautiful blue eyes of his the, the same that had pierced my soul? Were they merely a mimicry controlled by some emo algorithm? Had there never been anything real behind them all those times? Not once? Alex, it's not what you think. He pleaded with a strangely authentic note of panic in his voice, and I wanted to believe him, I really did. <sighs> well, clearly it hasn't been, I replied in equal parts, anxious and bitter. Me and my rotten luck, the first and last guy I fall for, and he turns out to be a goddamn motherboard on legs. No, that's not... Jason suddenly broke off and smiled awkwardly. Wait, did you... did you say fall for? My cardio implant began to beat more and more quickly. My face flushed. Had I been wrong? Could this body of bolts, wires, and plastic really contain whatever is left of the real Jason Cadales? If his father was able to design a synthetic heart for me, maybe he could do the same for his son's brain. The question is, why? So I love the fact that the shards that you find in the world are a mix of uh, fiction like this one and reports and lore about the actual world itself. Um, although the world's so wild, it's sometimes a bit difficult to tell the, where the line ends between one and the other. Ooh, hello. What have we got up here? Uh, resist. Reduces damage over time. No! Redu <laughs> Reduces damage over time by 40%. I don't believe it. When I was fighting um, Lieutenant Moa, the cyber psycho, a couple of episodes ago, I was frantically looking around for a perk that did this, and it turns out it wasn't a perk at all. It's a bloody clothing mod. No mods of this type available. Um, unbelievable. That's what I was searching for all that time. 
Uh, do you know what? I'm tempted to just go ahead and throw it in. Why not? Now, we've actually finally found the damn thing. Okay, so our over overcoat now reduces damage over time by 40%. Which, as I said before, I think is electrical and maybe fire. Militech truck. Oh. Cabron has only swept a couple crates. A whole fucking semi. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even go up there for that. All right, we've got another shard here. Old Maelstrom filled jacket. Okay, okay. What have we got here? Can cyberpsychosis be cured? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, the next couple of these that we come across and then just to sort of uh, move things along, I'll do what we did in the scavenger apartment and uh, pocket them and read them a little bit later. Can cyberpsychosis be cured? Opinions on that question are divided. Only a few years ago, so-called brain dance therapy was used across the entire country on a mass scale with the aim of bringing the sick back from the point of no return. The patient would be placed on a special chair and connected to a device that would deactivate all implants. Then electrodes would be attached, inducing the patient into a coma-like brain dance session. This was then followed up by medicine, psychosurgery, and the aversion therapy. That doesn't sound pleasant. The overall treatment was intended to sever all the patient's neural connections and tie them back together so that the cyberpsycho could return to society. So it's like deprogramming the brain and the body from using uh, cyber implants. Once the therapy was concluded, no symptoms of cyberpsychosis were detected, as well as the patient's former personality. But don't worry, nowadays other methods are used. At least that's what they tell us. Interesting. So, this kind of supports Regina's theory that cyber psychos aren't completely beyond help and uh, they're worth sort of securing and uh, and attempting to bring back into society. Uh, Jackie's going that way. What's... Ooh, easy to forget that... Oh, hello. Easy to forget that this place is a meatpacking factory, so you, you get equipment like this dotted around. Five, uh, 75 years of cyberware by Tsutomi Takahashi. Sorry, Tsutomu Takahashi. A century ago, losing a limb meant tragedy. It meant living with permanent disability, with severely reduced physical capability, and often with chronic pain. What's more, people with disabilities frequently suffered from widespread discrimination, both active, for example employment bias, and passive or unconscious, poor infrastructural inaccessibility. Today, assuming the dismemberment victim is financially stable, loss of limbs accounts to little more than a minor inconvenience. <laughs> There's the sticking point, assuming that they're financially stable. A century ago, employers could impose specific dress codes, hairstyle regulations, and piercing and tattoo bans. Many even pressed their employees to maximise productivity, often in violation of the law, such as through anti-pregnancy policies. Ooh, wow. At the time, however, deeper involvement with employees' bodies was simply impossible, legal or otherwise. But with the advent of cyberware, employers in the second half of the 21st century have imposed requirements for skin, bone, muscle, organ and eye replacements in order to improve performance and workplace effectiveness. In extreme cases, security sector employees are commonly urged to undergo so-called full body conversions or full cyborgization. Woof. We picked up that shard in V's Mega Building, didn't we? About the uh, the top five employers in Night City. And one or two of those uh, mentioned having to undergo certain levels of um, cyberware installation in order to even work there. Much has changed over the past 75 years from when cybernetic implants first hit the mass market. Many in the field of history of technology have argued cyberware is a positive force for progress, and many have argued the opposite. This book attempts to describe and contextualise the changes, for better or worse, that it has introduced to our professional and personal lives. How has cyberware led us to where we are today, and where is it taking us next? Jesus, the, the, the future in this game is a scary place. I mean, on the face of it, it's like, yeah, cyberware, that's awesome. Yeah, get sort of robot legs and can sort of see over great distances and scan things at a distance and then you realize that it's <laughs> essentially just another several tiers of personal invasion uh, hello oh geez anti-personnel mine directional shrapnel's better my favorite subtle <laughs> yeah so subtle i nearly ran through them they've got them on all of the doors as well by the looks of things Anti-personnel mine. Uh, yeah, we've been there. Directional shrapnel's better. My favorite. Subtle. All right, Jackster. 
Are we heading in? Let's go. Oh, hello. Interesting. So our, our first Maelstrom goon obscured by the uh, spotlight. Oh, there's one. Oh, we can't really make him out from a distance too well, but uh, yeah. Speaking of employers that require you to... Uh... <laughs> Stay cool. They're just trying to spook us. Yeah, speaking of employers that um, require you to undergo a certain level of uh, cyborgization, I think we can count the Maelstrom in with those as well. Hello. What do we have here? Gash anti-personnel grenade. Activates 21 lasers that deal damage for five seconds. Woof! Yes, please. Don't mind if I help myself to you boys. No, thanks. Most kind. Ooh, hello. Right, The Solo's Manual by Morgan Blackhand. I'll make this the last one that I actually read. The rest I'll just pocket for later. Now, Morgan Blackhand, he was uh, mentioned a couple of times previously. Uh, Jackie, I believe, mentioned him when we were driving away from the Sandra Dorset uh, mission as being one of, the, one of the legends of Night City. Think you got what it takes to be a legendary solo, huh? Sure you do. Otherwise, why pick up this book? You're looking for respect, for fear, for a way to be on top. Maybe you heard someone quote me about winning battles with only a glance before a single shot's been fired. Well, fine, I'll let you in on a secret. It is possible, and you can do it too. But only if you've got the guts to survive going to hell and back more times than you can count. Thousands of fights, millions of bullets, hundreds of gallons of blood, yours included. That's what you have to look forward to. And you'll need a solid ripper, one you can trust. Ah, we got that checked. One you can make a li uh, make lifelong chumbatas out of. One who tells you every week it's a miracle you ain't dead by now. At least that's what he'll say if you're lucky. Nowadays, every kid with a with big iron, a sin leather coat, and a micro missile launcher thinks they're a hot shot solo. But you know what? Just because you killed a few goons with a smile on your lips doesn't make you one. Anyone can kill. I knew this rocker boy once who blew up a whole fucking platoon of corpo trash. Did that make him a solo? No, it made him dead. So, still think you got what it takes to carve your name into solo history? Good, then this book's for you. Haha, <laughs> Morgan Blackhand is indeed a legend of Night City. He's actually a legend of the cyberpunk um, universe. As a uh, sort of a little bit of a, a, a meta fact for you, uh, if you're not aware, Morgan Blackhand is actually the roleplay character of Mike Pondsmith, the guy who created the entire cyberpunk 2022 and 2077 universe. Quite the name. their turf oh so what do you want hi dum dum uh i'm here to speak to royce here to see royce we got biz to transact mr royce is busy just now you will deal with me you got a bot model mt0 d12 called the flathead and the hell you care Guy I represent already paid Brick for it. I'm just here for the pickup. I can talk direct to Royce if necessary. <laughs> nah, you talk to me. Name's Dum Dum. Now couch, planet. Yeah, so demanding to speak directly to Royce obviously doesn't fly because Dum Dum here knows full well that that deal went down with Brick, not Royce. Jesus, these guys are unpleasant. You fucking death! Their skin is like leather torn to shreds. Uh, well, shit. Goes for you too. I'll stand. <laughs> this so fucking hard? Fucking ass on the fucking couch! Make me. Thought you'd never ask. Uh, See your ass down for a planet bullet in your skull. Jackie. Jack, sit down. Come on, big guy. It's all right. Gonna end well, but shit. Well, all right. Come on, got lighten up. Take a hit. <laughs> oh, street kid option. We recognize this. What you blowing? Pure as baby powder. 
<laughs> Black lace. Tough to get your hands on. You gotta have a good source. What's it do? Upstorfs an adrenaline to the point you feel no pain. Trips so intense it verges on psychosis. Corpse fed it to their fighting legions during the Corp Wars. Oh wow, drug soldiers. Psychos pop the tabs like candy. Vaporizing it mellows the burn without killing any of the effect. Come on, give it a whirl. <sighs> Go on then. If it gets us in the good books. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say better. Now we can talk. Here we go. A flathead. Model MT0 D12. That's what we're here after. I would just want to see if I can... Ah, I can't quite reach over. I wanted to scan that guy in the seat over there. He's obviously net running, but I'm intrigued to see what he's doing. Militech's not gonna come looking for it. Fuck them. They can hop around and try. We'll remove the serial number and lift an access locks using our soft. Wow. If it's yours, it's yours. These guys are more advanced than they look. Need to see it. Sue yourself. Fucking tricked out this thing. Dynamic thermal optic camo armor. Full cognitive immersion with a Raven controller. Pimp down prototype actuators made of titanium vanadium Kevlar composite. And watch <laughs> this. Fully integrated link too. So when the spider starts crawling up walls dangling from ceilings. Mm -hmm. Could lose your lunch. Very cool What's toy. No one at Dex wants to get his hands on it. Yep, we'll take it. Free. Sure. Yeah. Let's see your cred. Brick got it. It's all paid out. Ah. He must be Royce. I don't see any fucking brick around here, do you? <laughs> Let's I'm talking to you. Let's appeal to his good nature. Fuck Brick then. Let's cut a new deal. Now that's good business sense. Alright. You want the flathead? I better see some eddies. Uh right, we've got that credit chip that's been cleaned from Meredith's stand. <laughs> Do we want to press for a discount? I'm to you. Seeing as you already got the eddies for it. You ought to offer us a discount. A big one. A discount? Fuck. You know, you never did say who sent you. Never did say who you're working for. Dexter Deshaun. That's who. Dexter Deshaun. The lord ass who punching <laughs> animal fucked half a Pacifica? <laughs> and he ain't dead? No. He's alive, well, and kicking. He sends his regards. So, I'm gonna consider my offer now. Come on, boys, we can settle this amicably. Uh, I, I, I don't really want to shoot wait. him. This, this chip's clean. Let's use it. Here's the cred. Hell, I'll even toss in some info as a friendly bonus. Militech's on to you. They're close. Ooh. What? Cred chip was spiked with a virus. But don't worry, I wiped it. Ha! Huh. Interesting. This might get him on side. What's the verdict? That rusty cunt. Now I gotta deal with this shit. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Well, our survey you says. Take the damn bot and get the fuck out of my factory. Whew. 
Okay. Uh If this is a trick, I'm going to introduce you to our meat grinder. <laughs> Come on, take it. Okay. Uh hold on. Hold on one second, boys. I'm sure there's uh I'm sure there's stuff to be looted. Uh just take it out. Okay. Take okay. The bot and go. All right. Got what we came for. Nova, so now leave. And hey, after you get Dex's dick out of your mouth, <laughs> tell him I say hello. <laughs> your boss is a thoroughly nice chap. Whoa. Shit. Man attack. Let's get the fuck out of here. Follow me. Militech couldn't manage it on the sly with the chips, so they rolled in the big guns. More their fucking style. <laughs> oh shit. Right, okay. Um, real quick scan. Let's do a scan of this guy, see what he's up to. Code freak. Alright, what uh wait, this is is this hackable? Nope. Doesn't seem to be. Uh Right, I'll be with you in a second. Alright, alright, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Right, Shard, what have we got? Blaming Bart Moss by Bugbear. Interesting. Must be about the fall of the web. Right. It's not hanging around anymore. So he said we're going through ventilation shafts. Alright, let's grab a couple of bits as we go along. What's on this computer here? Let's see. Oh, five messages. Um, Dum Dum, I'll be with you in about half. I'll be with you in about half an hour. Do dumb. I'm not helping myself. Oh, brilliant. He's using us as bullet sponges. Wonderful. I knew you were a pleasant chap the moment I saw you, dum dum. Right, so marketing issue. So this must be. This must still be uh, Orfode's email as opposed to Maelstrom, I guess. Mark, I still have a problem with the direction of this ad. I. It won't pass the focus groups with flying colors, if at all. What do we hope to achieve by advertising milk? I know you've seen the latest reports. Even if we jack up nutrient content and tweak the consistency, we still lose to biotechnical alternatives. Our paste products already taste, uh, test worse with younger consumers. Besides, it's not even clear who the target audience is for this. You are aware most of our target sales are in urban markets, right? Unless you're playing off a sense of misplaced nostalgia or some reference I, don't, I just don't get. We need to seriously consider reassigning the marketing budget from milk to something else. Do you have anything in mind from R&D that's already been tested? Lizzie, I'm not fully prepared to drop the milk product just yet. Despite your first impressions, we've actually put quite a lot of thought into this campaign. Still, I'm waiting to explore other options. We have the meat mixture based on insect proteins. Ooh, ready to go. The same we discussed last year, but weren't happy with texture or smell. I'm not surprised you're mashing up insects and passing it off as meat. There's also a soluble powder based on mealworm larvae used as the base for porridges and soups. Main problem there is we'd have to start from scratch. Let me know if either of these options speaks to you and we'll sync on the topic later this week. Mark. Uh, something about a porno BD. Do you crave more? Looking for the hottest experience? Des desire unlimited porn axes? Axes? What? Find it all here. <laughs> Fire, fuck, skin, melt, fuck yourself, BDSM, orgy fest, and so much m m more. Um, okay, forever young. I'm. Oh dear, I'm not sure I like the sound of this. Oh no, okay. I, I, following on from the porn BD one, I was a little bit suspect as to the subject of this. But are you in your fifties, sixties, even your seventies, but still want to look like you did in your teens? Do you crave the eternal youth of the Arasakas? That's fair. But can't afford the implant? We've got a solution. One a day. Putinamix will slow the effects of aging, helping you look 20 years younger. Oh dear, studies have shown it's over 95% effective. I'm 68 years old, I don't look a day over 40. My wife's friends constantly ask how she bagged her cougar sells such a young husband. You should see her face when she tells them I'm actually old enough to be her father. Oh god, this world is wrong. Need someone to watch your back? Oh, I think we've seen this one before. I think I've encountered this one before. Yeah, this is the animals. Like we said before, animals mainly work as uh, protection and security in Night City. Right. I think what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to call it there. We're going to take a quick break and then dive into the All Foods plant properly and uh, see what mess Militech's going to make. But in the meantime, thank you very much for coming along. If you'd like to leave a like or care to leave a comment, then please do so in the usual manner. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.